if they, we got the Justin Bieber haircut right now. Okay. I I need a I bro I'm gonna get a haircut on Wednesday. It's it's too baby it's... baby baby. Okay okay. okay. Baby oh. <laughs> <laughs> baby, baby. He's got the beanie out. Uh we we bullied him with the beanie. <laughs> oh no. Oh, I feel so bad. Wow, we should have left the bowling for when we were Oh wait, uh, we are recording. We can post it as a recording. blooper. We can that's fine. That's fine. Oh, no, this is going we in. Are recording. Is going we can in. post it as a blooper. This is, it's going in. You did this. You guys you guys did this. <laughs> well, we were recording, so we're, that's going. It's yeah, you're not you're not you're going going not uploading that though. We're not uploading that. No, it's going in. No, <laughs> no, no, it's, it's going not. in. It's, it's going in. Nope. Nope, it definitely it's is. It's Two to one decision. Right, it's going I'm, in. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna start it right now then. Alright. Hello everyone. Episode twenty four podcasting series right now, right here. All three of us here, a little bit of a dysfunctional one. I got my AirPods on my normal mic, Dio's got a cold, bullied into a beanie, undress is undress. <laughs> So we're just gonna. Hey, yo, what go. the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> what? Yo, yo. We're just gonna. Hey, yo, yo. I'm caught for. <laughs> yo. Wow. All right, all right, all right. It's cool. It's yeah. cool. It's cool. Oh, okay. Hey, I do me. I do me. I'm just that unique. That my presence alone just adds uniqueness every <laughs> single time. That, that was That's that fine. was crazy. That, that was, was good. That crazy. was good. All right, we got we got Tottenham, Antonio Conte, we got Jude Bellium. Men's national team stuff for the USA, managerial stuff, Holland and Mbappe, we've got everything today. Any of that interests you, stick around, like the video, <laughs> subscribe to see the uh, clips of it uploaded later on, and uh, and all that jazz. I'm just going to get right into it. I'm just going to put Diego on blast here. Uh, oh. Tottenham, Diego. Tottenham, oh. Antonio Conte out. Good decision, bad decision. And oh. who are you replacing him with? Oh, man. You don't understand the the conversation that's been had between Tottenham fans over the past. I don't know. Well, that's, when, why, when was, that's, why that's why I'm asking you. That's why I'm asking you. Yeah. No. It's uh oh, It's been it's been crazy. You've had so many. Because the thing is that rant was so mm. so controversial. Because spot on the one on. hand, oh. no, 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 hold on, hold on. On the one hand, it is spot on. On the other hand, the way he went about doing it and the and that he's choosing to do it at the end. Of the of this of his reign, rather than where he felt like he could actually make a difference, is is very counterproductive to what we're trying to do here. Like, sure, you can call out the players, you can call out the the, the club, but the fact that you're doing it now, when you know your time mm-hmm. is up, rather than when you should be doing it to actually try to improve everything, is not helping anyone. It's not helping your case either. It's so just k- kicking time them when they're down. Exactly, like. If he had done, like, obviously he would have been this aggressive, but if he had at least said, hey, some of the players here have this problem and this and this, when we were in the, you know, in the beginning, I don't think anyone would have disagreed there. I think everybody would have been on his side. But when you go that hard, that, that like, intense, at when at a point where you know you're, you can have nothing to lose, people lose a bit of respect in that regards because you, no, you have nothing to lose and you have, there's nothing backing your claims there. Now, with that being said, he, he was he was speaking facts, one hundred percent. He was speaking facts. I don't, I don't think I don't yeah. think anyone there is against what he said. It's just the way he went about it that yeah. was not not great. That's fair. Um, as for Conte in or out, I mean, I, I said this last time we talked about Tottenham. I said he's out. Um, I think he is not. He does not have the patience for how slow we are. We are building this project, um, and. We need someone who's gonna, who's willing to have a bit more patience, and Conte is not that guy. Um, we're probably gonna have Ryan Mason be interim manager, like he did when yes. he, when we lost Mourinho. Mason yes. Ball gets in. No, actually, genuinely, I'm actually happy about that. I think Ryan Mason is a passionate guy who's deserves who a chance. Future. Yeah, deserves a chance, yeah. and 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 I think it'll be good. Now, the actual long term replacement that's who. That's a whole a other lot. question. That's a whole yeah, I, I, I'm kind of curious as to I, I wonder what Tottenham told Conte because I think yeah what, when when he get when he gets appointed because if 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 they tell him there's going to be a two three four year long process we want you to stick around he wouldn't they had to have told him we want to be on top within a year yeah year and a half and then he yeah. didn't say anything made like any <clears throat> actions toward those promises and 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 he's out now I don't know. 
I completely agree. I think we def Levy sold him some dreams. Maybe ideally Levy would have liked to have been in that spot too. Uh, maybe maybe mm-hmm. he didn't fully lie. Maybe he was like, yeah, I wanna I wanna be challenging yeah, at that point. But nonetheless, he and in all honesty, it's not like we had not backed him. We 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 backed him quite a bit. Um, but we needed we need a bit more time, and Conte is not 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 here for that. And that's you know that that's fine. I, to be honest, though, I think most people kind of knew it was going to end up like this anyway. It was just whether we could get something out of it before it all came crashing down, and it hasn't. And and honestly, I, we we want someone who who wants to be here. And if Conte is at this point doesn't want to be here, then yeah, get get him the hell out. Like I'm not going to support yeah. a guy who doesn't want to be here. I'm I'm I am also interested in timing of it all. Um, I think I think at this point, after the press conference, post post match interview, blah blah. blah you kind of have to sack him. Yeah. You know, you can't let no one can be above the club, manager, player, board, chairman, any of that. Um, and he made that, he, I, I think he made that comment wanting, yeah. almost wanting to be sacked. Yep. This international break. Oh, I wait, you guys didn't see the, the post I sent. Oh, no. Oh, he's, ex- oh, oh, he's yeah. expected to be sacked in the coming week. Well, I, I, I did see that. Cause I saw Fabrizio Romano tweet about it. So we know it, it is going to happen. Um, but again, it's just it's just uh, interesting because I don't know, it's 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 a dilemma, right? Because he he does have you in the top four race, despite having a rough season, uh, and a pretty tough season where uh, there are a few other teams who are battling for it too. You don't want to keep him to the end of the season if you know if let's, let's say he doesn't make these comments. Let's say oh, yeah. you keep him in the season, then get rid of him because his contract does expire anyway. But right, I I if he was if it wasn't this volatile volatile and this toxic then i would have said yes let's 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 finish the end of the season because if i'm being completely 100 honest with perspective here this is actually over the past several years this is one of our better seasons and and worse than like, last year though worse than uh statistically it is how much i just thought was on that not more by losses. much more losses and worse goal difference i think Okay. And yeah, let's win. Wor- worse than last year, which obviously is in progress. But at the same time, last it's year was the year. first top four we got in like five, four or five years. So, uh, again, still better than when we were under Jose, when we were under Nuno. Um, and probably I forgot when about we were Nuno. in our last. <laughs> oh, I forgot about Nuno. oh, yeah. Nuno was, I totally forgot. Nuno was ass. <laughs> Nuno was ass. You know what Nuno is now? In, some, in like Saudi Arabia. Like, that's how bad he was. He stayed with Wolves. What a shame. <laughs> he could have. He he had magic with wolves and then he's just uh, threw it away. Yeah, but basically it's actually, it's honestly not even not even horrible. We're in a Champions League spot. Obviously it's still close, but after these those comments, there's no way you can be like, yeah, well, he's staying. No, that's not going to happen. We're going to have to yeah. rely on some Mason Ball to to get us top four. Um, and then from there, oof, yeah. the summer's going to be crazy. A new manager. Whether we get Kane to stay, I've actually heard rumors that we were we we're really trying to get Kane to stay. Sure, um, yeah. I don't know if that's going to happen, but when we have Daniel Levy as, as the, the guy, you never, you never know, know what's going to happen. You never know. The, the See, dude I, is, yeah, insane. I think I think for the rest of the season, um, Tottenham have himself in a decent position. I mean, one point behind. Title contenders in Manchester United, who do have two games on you, but two uh two title points ahead contenders, of Newcastle. Hold up. Well, that was that's what they were saying. Um, anyways, two <laughs> points above uh, Newcastle, who also have two games on you, um, and then seven points above the next, so uh, uh, which Newcastle. is Liverpool and and Brighton. But <laughs> pretty decent lead. Um, but I I kind of want to I do kind of view this as a statement sacking, if you will. I think yeah. it's it's a necessary one. I think everyone agrees with that. But I, I think, like, seeing that Tottenham are willing to potentially almost throw away a top four finish, depending on what happens, I don't know, uh, throw away a top four finish just to say that no one's above the club, or yeah, that being Antonio Conte, I think it's pretty big. I kind of like that. If I'm being honest, ruthless. I ruthless. yeah, I think so too. I I just think, look, I have a lot of respect for Conte. We have a lot of good memories. Um, I love them. But, but you can't, you can't go off like that. No. You can't go off like that. And the thing is, I was reading this article from Alex Goad, who's like an incredibly good Tottenham journalist, 
And he was saying how afterwards he talked to the board and said that he wasn't really talking about them. He was talking about the players. When you look directly at his quotes, the players haven't been there for around 20 years. You know who's been around for 20 years? The board and Daniel Levy. Board, so yeah. don't don't come and try to like play nice now. Like that that is just like own up to it. You're gonna talk shit, talk shit. But don't then try to backtrack that, you know? Like that's that's not it. I think these are comments you make if you're like a Sir Alex Ferguson at Manchester United, if you're a Pep Guardiola, even if you're like yeah. a Jurgen Klopp, you know, you have the pedigree and where someone's actually gonna listen to you. And to, like you need to have accomplished something with the club. Yeah. To say so you at least know and have seen the deterioration. Um Conte hasn't done crap. No, no. offense. And that's the, maybe not entirely his fault, but um you can't be making this comments without an end goal in sight and his end goal being he wants out. Yeah. And uh, I'm gonna be honest. The two things to that actually. The first part is the only manager who could talk is Pochettino. Right. And we everybody agrees that we wrongfully sacked him and because we didn't back him. Um, yeah, and so he said those things as well. You you'll go back and see interviews. He wasn't as intense about it, but he he said those things, and and to your point about Conte, like he he had his moments where we thought the the football was actually pretty good, and I think with the right players, it could be quite good. That being right. said, the fact that we regressed. In the way, like you said, that that we regressed and 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 are actually in a worse spot than we were last season, isn't promising in, at all. Yeah. And and like yeah, we could have beaten Sheffield United. We don't need. But yes, the fact that we're still starting Eric Dyer every game is is not great. But you could beat Sheffield United with Eric Dyer, no matter how crap he chooses to be that day. Like it's yeah. possible to win a, ga- a game against Sheffield United and keep us in the FA Cup. That was just more of a fact that Conte did not prepare well for that game. I think no matter what, he's he's gone. Maybe tomorrow, maybe in the two two three days. But I think he's gone. And by the next game, we'll have Ryan Mason as our manager. So we'll see. Yeah. Who doesn't love a little Ryan Mason? I love I love I love that man. He, I don't know if you guys know the story behind him at all. Um, Tell us it. He 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 was he played for you know Tottenham, and then he had us. Um, head injury that oh yes kept him out and basically retired him early. He retired at like 28, 29. Um, and he he was like devastated, you know, depressed, of course. Every all the emotions you could feel about being re- forced to retire early, naturally. And 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 you know, not to go too much in detail, but look at him now, a uh, young up and coming guy who wants to get his managing license and is currently an assistant manager at Tottenham. I love I love that man. I love that man so much, and I, I do think he'll make us proud, um, even if he lacks a lot of experience in the, in the big leagues. He almost he almost beat City in that cup final, no? One no loss, oh, just a one no loss. He almost beat one of the greatest managers of all time. I, I would have been some. What a story! This yeah. could be the next. Will Stills goes on nineteen game unbeaten streak at this at the ripe young age. Honestly, I'm calling it right now. Ryan Mason, give it five six years. We might be looking at a club be up there. I think, I think we might be looking at that. Interesting. Yeah. All right. Let's 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 pivot this then to a little. Uh, we'll keep with Tottenham, but uh, is, is Poch going back? Is that the answer? Do I think that's the answer? No. Do I think it's going to happen? No. Would I absolutely want it to happen? One hundred percent. I I I I need. I, Poch will come back at some point. He said it before. He wants to come back and finally finish off what he missed out on when it was a trophy. But I don't think it's going to be the next manage, manager to be to be him. I've seen too many rumors and too many reports that they're not looking at him yet. Mm-hmm. It looks more like Luis Enrique, um, somebody else. I, I, there's a list that I was looking at um, that had. I'm, I'm uh, putting my vote. I'm putting my vote in there for Tottenham waiting for West Ham to sack David Moyes and they get David Moyes. <laughs> God no, God no, no. <laughs> You don't yeah, want to play Moyes ball? You don't want to have the Moyes Zaya on your team? Are you sure? The Moyes Zaya. No. You don't want the Moyes no, Zaya no, on your no. team? I, I will uh, literally sure? stop stop supporting Tottenham if we appoint David Moyes. <laughs> what a, what's I, so wrong with David Moyes? He might bring us a European championship. <laughs> he might do the same to you. Who knows? Let's, let's he might bring you a championship for sure. He <laughs> hey, hey all, I'm, all I'm saying is if we win, we can say champions of Europe, you know, and we're fine. We're chilling. And then when we play Tottenham... We can be like, well, you know what? Guess what? 
Sucks to you suck. can say champions of like. No, you like can say champions the of Europe. Of Europe. No, champions of not, Europe, buddy. Not even, not even Europa League people say champions of Europe. Still can say it. Oh man! Yeah. No, I hope uh, just, just to I say, hope West Ham does not win it. We won European trophies, so we 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 are technically, by your logic, we're champions of Europe as well. Yeah, but not in your lifetime, bud. That's that's not. Meanwhile. The... That's Shut up, Elijah. Shut up. No, let's gang up on Elijah. Shut up, Elijah. Who gives a shit? <laughs> <laughs> Who gives a shit? Day I graduated. Right before my graduation. Okay, I Havers don't care. I generally couldn't care Manchester less. City to win the Champions League final. I nearly cry. I run around my house. Digga was there. Digga was, was in there. my house. I was there. It, 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 <laughs> I, it was not fun. It was not fun. I, I was I was that praying was on your downfall fun. that day. And it I did not happen. Were. I know you were. It what did not day. happen. What a day. Uh, All right. Good good Tottenham discussion, Diego. We love that. Yeah. We love that. I okay. don't. I, <laughs> I find it so funny. Like, Chelsea, pain. out of, like, the big six, Chelsea have been, like, the worst team this whole this whole time. But the conversation almost every week goes back to either Conte or Tottenham. And the the fact that Tottenham are in the top four is, is almost magnificent. You, you it really to, is. It's quite surprising if you, th- if you th- it, think about the top four. Quite sensational. Quite sensational. Okay, let's pivot a little bit to uh, to uh, to a Thierry, to U.S. Men's National Team kind of discussion here. Um, as you might know, Patrick Vieira just got sacked by Crystal Palace after I think it was like twelve games without a win. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, games without January. a win. Since yeah, they have, they have not won this calendar year, so he gets the sack, unfortunately. Um, which I I do want to say something real quick. They have they don't have Wilfred Zaha by far the best player, and they haven't played a team that's underneath them in the table. So they have been unfortunate scheduling-wise, and they're, they've they decided Roy Hodgson is the solution, again, over... Was he ever <laughs> over... the solution? <laughs> I don't think so. Roy Hodgson is the main... <sighs> Roy Zaya? I think we, we can say okay. that. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> okay. Don't disrespect Moy Zaya like that by oh, rocking around kidding. with Zaya at the end of every Just manager now. Kidding. Come on um, now. Uh, in all fairness, they are above West Ham. So, uh, anyway, let's. Uh, Not for long. So for the US Men's National Team, we ha- we have mentioned we barely we barely talked about it, but uh, Thierry Henry wants to be the Men's National Team manager for the US USA team. Mm-hmm. He's publicly said that on his Paramount Plus. With with Micah and Jamie and all that, he said it. He had I don't know if you guys knew this, but he's a few days ago he had the opportunity to be the France women's head coach for the women's national team. Declined yeah. it in hopes to be the U.S. manager. But now that Patty V, Patty V is in the running. At least he he's at least available for a manager position. Some American fans are calling for his name over Thierry Henry. If you I'm not saying you're not American national fans, uh, U.S. men's national team fans, but who would you pick, Terry Henry or 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 Patty V, two Arsenal legends? Do we do we have to pick one of them? <laughs> if you had to pick between one of them, yes. <laughs> okay, if we had, had to pick. Uh, how about free agent Jesse Marsh? I'll take him. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll take that Diego's man. I, I like I like option C, the, the write-in option. I agree with Diego. I like <laughs> yeah. that option. The I like the write-in option. option. The well, purely the reason why the write in option should exist is because those are just like if you get Thierry Henry, that's just a big name to have, but like I don't know if you'll get any product out of it. You know, I was like, mm-hmm. don't hire big names just for the sake of it, you know? Um and then for the other one, I feel like he's the better option because he just finished up his managerial thing, so he's an actual manager who's been managed for a little bit now. So yeah, I think that's the better option, but Jesse Marsh is the my right in option. So I cross out both of those and then put Jesse Marsh. I I I yeah, I would go Jesse Marsh, but if if I had to choose those two, it would obviously be Patrick Vieira. He at least there was a time where we all thought he was actually doing quite well with Crystal Palace. He had a he had a nice run going with a young yeah. young squad. In my opinion, he was doing good. He just they just got a bad schedule. You know, was, bad form. He, he, it, it affects you, it hits you. It's fine. Losing it your, your main player. Uh, Vincent Company said the other day that he doesn't agree with the with the sacking. He thinks Crystal Palace are overachieving this year. Um, They're twelfth. Kind of it's not say, even that bad. Twelfth isn't even that bad. They're twelfth. Uh, I mean, yeah. they are three points in uh in front it's, of the relegation zone. It's okay. It's bad, but 
considering you look at their squad, you, there's nothing. Not, they're all extremely young. Um, and and yes, they have a star player in Wilfred Zaha, but I mean, this isn't basketball. One one player doesn't doesn't move you up and you like you know give you ten to ten wins or whatever. So it's not like he can do a lot on his own. And all the other players are still young, and developing, and still very raw in their talent. So mm-hmm. honestly, I thought I think Patrick Vieira is actually a, a very good manager. I would I wouldn't be surprised to see him move to another club that that are looking for someone to, like him that can that can really. They can give him time and potential. I, I could see that happening. Um, and I do think he's better managing Thierry Henry because, let's be honest, Thierry Henry's track yeah. record is a lot worse than Pat, Patrick Fierre's track record. The, so, the scenes, the scenes. Patty V, new Tottenham manager. No, I'm just kidding. No, yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. That, that the manager goes Sol Campbell, but reverse. That didn't happen. I mean, he'll um, he'll be patient with the board because, you know, he'll be having his dream job. So, I mean, that's someone who you can pick. Just saying. Yes, it's fair. Um, in terms of in terms of Crystal Palace, I love Crystal Palace's team by the way because they have Wilfred Zaha, Edward. Oh, I hate them. I love him from Celtic. Uh, I I hate I I don't like Zaha as a person. I think as a team they could be very good. I mean they have you know young player Michael Elise, very good, very very good. Chris Richards, American center back. Uh, Mark, I, always, I never know how to pronounce his name, but Chelsea Chelsea center back Mark Guehi. Guehi. Oh, Guehi. I don't know. Guehi. I don't know. Whatever. But yeah, Petty V is more, way more obviously the better pick. Yeah. Um, I, personally, I pick him over Jesse Marsh. We we've uh-huh. we've gone over this. We've gone over this that we've said Jesse Marsh isn't ready. Uh, or we don't think. We don't think. Or, I, sorry, I'm not saying. I won't talk to you guys. I don't think that Jesse Marsh is ready for U.S. Men's National Team. I don't think the USA is ready for Jesse Marsh yet. That's Hold that's on. that's just that's my. Uh, Did he get sacked kind of again? Hmm. Could have sworn he just got sacked again. And where am I? Oh, no, I'm stupid. Why am I mixing up the managers? Never mind. For, for, I retract my comment. Okay. Anyways, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> it's fine. <I'm> <laughs> no, I, I read hey, somewhere this. Yes, that's embarrassing. Anyways, continue. It happens. But I, I, I pick Patty V over Jesse Marsh. I think overall he kind of did a little bit better than Jesse Marsh. Um, in general, we we we've seen Patty V be okay. He he managed he managed at uh, Nice. Um, before Crystal Palace, got them to a pretty good seventh place finish. Um, in his first season there, I think, which is a, a, a upgrade from the season before. Um, he could do bits. He could do bits. He's managed the MLS before, so he kind of knows the American system a little bit. I think I, I don't know who, but someone said someone higher up there said that they think the next USA manager needs to have MLS experience. I think. I agree with that. I think Patty B is a good option for that because I don't want an MLS manager. That just doesn't do as good, except for Bob Bradley, right? Um, so I think that that would be good because he kind of knows the system. He has pedigree in, in Europe. He's a commanding force because of his name. Blah, 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 things like that. I think he'd be better than Terry Henry. Would I like to see Terry Henry in the position? Yes, as a person, that's cool. But there are so many more qualified people than him. If you can't get points in the MLS, you shouldn't be the U.S. Team, team leader. Yeah. Simple as that. He, he should have taken the France woman's job because that's a big yeah. job. Like, that's not... It's not ahead of the World Cup too. Well, they might not be playing the World Cup, but ahead of the World Cup too. Um, just get just done, get more experience. And get he your could have done up. something there. The women's game is different than the men's game, but that's still really good experience uh, for him to take, um, regardless of who it, who it's with at a super high level in the international spot. That's it, that. I mean, yeah. The the one thing that Tyrion Reed does have over Patty V. Is international pedigree though, um, managing or managing because of Belgium, even though they suck. Belgium is so underwhelming, <laughs> but yeah. Hopefully that, they'll that's change that though. But with their new manager, Belgium's new manager, I highly doubt that. Who knows? Who knows? We'll see in the Euros if they qualify. Yeah, I think consensus though, Patty B. Patty yeah. B, I would not be mad at in general. Not not. Beside him, not just him and Terry Henry. I think that's that's a pretty that'd be a pretty big pickup, mm. pretty good name. Because face it, US USA is not going to get a Jose Mourinho or a Zidane and blah blah blah. No. As much as that'd be cool, they would not be getting that. Oh, uh, okay. So that's our US Men's National Team fix for the week. Fix for the week. People love it. I love it. Uh, let's talk about let's talk about. I want to talk about this this Erling Holland killing Mbappe. 
rivalry that people are trying to force on us or force on people, in my opinion. Um, is there a rivalry? Is there not? It, all I'm going to say is Mbappe, it, they don't bring the same terror level. Um, unlike Messi and Ronaldo, I think you face out of one of them, and that's a pretty big terror level. Uh, I don't know. What do you guys think? What do you guys think? Well, first off, congratulations to Mbappe for being the named captain for the France squad. Um, Crazy. But in regards to the the comparison, who's better? I feel like it was it was justified when Holland was at Dortmund, right? Because like they were like compet- competing with each other, you know, similar stats that wise. And then now that he's gone to City, it's kind of like he's kind of blown Mbappe out of the water purely because of like what he's done so far, in my opinion. Hmm. Especially okay. with all the goal contributions, the goals, the assists, all that jazz. So I think personally, I think he's better. Um, but at the same time, it's hard to really compare the two because a two completely different styles of play. You got okay. Holland's ginormous frame, who's who's able to leap and stuff, and you got Mbappe, who's speed like. Obviously, it's going to be different styles. And also, you have different players on the different teams. Like a City, compared to a PSG, like, you don't have the same playmakers that City does on PSG. Like, uh, uh, I think City has better playmakers. Therefore, he has more quality chances. And if you put Mbappe in a City situation with the same type of playmakers, then I think it's a lot closer. But the fact that he's kind of him on his own at the moment at PSG. He has Messi, yeah. But, like, you know. So two players can only do so much. And yes, BSG is a good squad, but... And Neymar. He... Hmm? And Neymar. Yo, he's injured, so that's why I didn't count him. Yeah. Well, I, I think I totally get what you're saying, uh, and, I, and I do like that. Yet, at the same time, the arguably biggest debate in the world of football is Messi and Ronaldo, and they are two very different players. And that's been, like I said, the biggest debate we've probably ever seen in the world of sports maybe yeah. alongside yeah. like LeBron and MJ. Um, so that's, that's kind of why I bring this point because a lot of people do kind of want to push this narrative of a Mbappe versus Holland kind of thing because the, the, the Ronaldo Messi era is ending soon. So I think they kind of want something there. Yeah. Um, I mean, I think you always it, have to have though, you always have to have a competition with someone because it's a new generation yeah. now. Like what they had back in the day was Pele or Maradona and stuff like that, you know? So it's like, mm-hmm. So, like, now this is Ronaldo, Messi's chapter's over, and now we move on to see who will be the best. Because it's always, like, every greatest player of all time, there's always going to be someone that's going to come along in the future rivaling it. And so is it going to be, like, the Holland and Mbappe? Because those are the two biggest players, arguably, in the world right now at the moment. So, like, you obviously you got to pit the two biggest players uh, against each other just for the sake of drama and argumentation because people yeah. like arguing especially on twitter so they have something to do now because ronaldo football, fans man. ronaldo fans are over they can't argue anymore so they, someone they gotta argue about something now we're so gonna get a pick a side. Boys comment again <laughs> dude it's, it's fine it's hey <laughs> look i was like okay they're pretty even but Messi's better and then he Messi won a world cup you can't compete with that after that point it ends the conversation right there sure Think, and who's uh, playing gonna, in Saudi Arabia? That's all I got to say. I mean, come on now. I'm going to kind of go against Andres here. And I'm going to say that You're I think... Wrong. I, I'm joking. Well, not the Ronaldo thing. But I'm joking. Um, who doesn't love a good rivalry between Mbappe and Holland or in general? I think, you know, it's great. Compare the two. And that's going to be... That's probably going to be the rivalry we talk about for the next 20 years. 15, 20 years. Um, so we can't escape it. But... Uh, I am on the Mbappe side where I think players are more scared to face Mbappe than Holland. And I'm not trying to take away from Holland because I think Holland is arguably alongside Mbappe and Ozzy Min as the best, as like the top three strikers in the world right now uh, in terms of form and, and, and all that jazz. But I think generally from what I, what I've seen and what other people are saying, or what players are saying is that Mbappe is a more feared opponent right now. I think Holland will get there in a year or two, but Mbappe is just the, the, his finishing, his speed, his playmaking ability, his uh, finesse, his flair. I don't know. I, I, I think that's a little bit scarier uh, in my opinion. So I'm putting that one over there, but let's, let's, let's see what Diego's tiebreaker is. Yeah. I, I, 
the, okay, this is not not related to the Mbappe Holland specifically, but what you were saying in general, Elijah, I agree with you mm. that uh, this is going to be a comparison that's going to be made whether we like it or not. Um, so let's take a side right now. Yeah, and it's just it's just <laughs> on the one record. Of those, <laughs> it's just one of those that's going to happen, and mm-hmm. I do think it's a little unfair because Mbappe has been doing this for longer, technically. Uh, That's true. Uh, he he has had more time to do it in bigger games, so I think like think about it, Holland. Yes, he's been absolutely tearing it up uh, every season since he's hit this hit the scene. But yeah. he hasn't done it in the biggest games yet. That like like the games that we know, like when yeah. we can think of and look back and be like, yeah, I remember that game he did it. Juan Vape, he already has so many to his name. Um, l- let's just go back to the World Cup final. He basically yep. carried France to an extra time. Um. And yeah. so, and, 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 if if they would have won that game, I think that could have went down as the best individual World Cup performance of all time. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Sorry, and, I didn't mean to cut you off. No, 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 yeah, and that's my point. Like he's had more time to come up in bigger games, and because of that, that fault that that forms a reputation, and that reputation starts starts getting into your head, and, and as a defender or as a, as a someone who has to defend <laughs> defend yeah. him, and because of that, that's why I think. Opponents are more scared of him right now. Definitely yeah. give Holland another year or two. He's going to perform big games, the type of player he is. He's going to start making the reputation, and you're going to start being scared. You won't just look back at a hat trick against Leipzig or, or, or five goals against Leipzig or a hat trick against Burnley and be like, oh, I mean, that's just whatever. He'll do that against big teams, and then you'll start being like, okay, yeah, he, he, he comes yeah. up with a big game. But as of right now, I have to go on Bappe as well, just because he is the guy that you're going to be scared of because you know at any minute you can turn it, turn it around. And yeah. and in all fairness, they're both good teams. PSG and Man City are both very good teams. And PSG, unfortunately, they play in a weaker league and I do think Mbappe should should move to a better league because I, I want to see him against better players and some of his French defenders. But, you know, right. besides that, I, I, I have to go Mbappe. If you, if you made me choose one, I would go Mbappe. I think, like, I think it's... Uh... In no way will I be able to say that one side is wrong, right? Like right, Messi, Ronaldo, right. I, I, I can <coughs> confidently say, but they've had twenty year long, you know, careers and stuff like that. Either way you pick, it's because it's how you view football, and if you, if you view it like, you know, almost, I, I don't know. I guess I, I'm not gonna make any comparisons right now, but like Mbappe is PSG's top goal scorer at twenty four. That is crazy. That is great. Holland, I'm sure. If he doesn't move, he probably will be the city all-time goal scorer. Yeah. That's almost a guarantee. And you're right, it's just at different stages. I will give Holland a little bit of, I don't want to say pity, but it's, it is unfortunate that he's no region because he probably would never get that World Cup final stage if, you know, World Cup knockouts, anything like that. Yeah. Unfortunately, yeah. Um, they have talent, they have quality, but they have nowhere near France's quality. So Mbappe, but that's also that too. Mbappe is captain of the French national team, which is arguably the one of the best, if not just top, we'll say top three national teams on the planet right now, and he's captain, and he's the, the biggest name on the French squad. I think that kind of speaks for itself, yeah. um, personally. personally. I agree. And I, I'm not, I, I think once Mbappe moves, he's going to be successful. I don't know. Honestly, it's exciting, because I think it's going to be a pretty heavily talked about and judged comparison for the next decade that we're not going to hear anything short of and then we're going to hear i don't know all kinds of things all kinds of things but that's me holland that's great greater. although andres i i do see your holland yeah i'm just saying, like if you want to compare like record wise like i mean holland's on track to actually break the premier league goal scoring record so it's like right it's like, you know, it's the Prem. That's hard to do. You know, it's the be- one of the hardest. I'm going to say one of the hardest, if not the best uh, league in the world. So, I mean, to break that on your first season is pretty special. And, I mean, totally. and uh, Mbappe, yeah, is top goal scorer at PSG. But, you know, it's a much it's a much lower league, farmer's league, some would say. So, yeah. you know, it, it, you can't compare the two league because of the differences. But, like, it's more impressive if Holland does it in the first season and he like shatters it, not just like barely breaks it, but like, I think the record's 32. So I think if he goes like 40, then I think that's, it'd be crazy personally. Right. I think 
I think, but that, yeah, I think we'll see. It's totally fair. I think I think there is a chance he doesn't hit it. Um, I think he probably will. And I'm just, I mean, I'm going to throw my vote out there for him doing it. But I think it's like one of those things, where, like if Mbappe was in the league, he would kind of be hitting similar numbers too. I don't know. Just in a different way, obviously. And I, I don't know. I, it's But it's, it's something where it's like, you can't even really think about it. It's just like, we'll see if it happens. If it doesn't, then hope so be it. Um, but yeah. I, 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 well, I agree that breaking that goal scoring record would be crazy. At the end of the day, what matters to me most is the performances in the big games, the ones that you can look back to and you're like, I remember that game and he changed that game. And Mbappe has way more of those than Holland does right now. And so that's why for me, it kind of makes it an easy choice to go Mbappe. That's fair. Yeah, that's fair. I think, honestly, any one of our opinions can change in five years. Of course, years, years. almost definitely, yeah. yeah. So, I, that, that for me, that's kind of what makes it such a good, such a good discussion, is because of that, that fact. Um, all right, we're going to pivot to, to, to one last topic before we call it a day. Um, so, Jude Bellingham, uh, English wonder kid, probably best player on Dortmund right now. Oh, man, right now. Um... He was he, the whole. The biggest rumor is is Liverpool. Oh God! Um, yeah, he's, he's supposed to go to Liverpool. Richie Sounds like that's die. not happening anymore. That's not happening anymore. It's very unlikely to happen in comparison to elsewhere. Um, this is according to Sky Sports. Uh, but Liverpool's chances of signing top target Jude Bellingham has reportedly suffered a blow. Uh, it turns out Borussia Dortmund are under no obligation to sell the 19-year-old. Oh, I keep forgetting he's 19, because there isn't a release clause in his contract, which I, I think everyone thought there was. As a result, it would take a huge fee to tempt them to part company with their prized asset. Uh, with Real Madrid and Manchester City also apparently being in stronger positions uh, than Liverpool. And, and man, what a blow to Liverpool. But I mean, I they're it. shit. I mean, I don't know what they expect. Like, honestly, with all the money that they have, like, they spend on, like, Gakpo, Nunez, right? Like, buy, like, buy, don't buy such expensive players. Buy, like, multiple players that are still quality you know like you don't have to buy like the big players because then they spend all their money and then their whole squad's so freaking old that they suck i i don't yeah, yeah but i mean i, I, don't, right, think, wait, wait, wait. I don't think this is related too much though to the bellingham thing it's oh no like for right. him no no i was gonna then connect it and then you oh okay and then and I'm saying, like, they shouldn't be even in the running. I'm not saying that they're poor. I'm just saying they shouldn't even be in the running because they are they need to build the squad instead of just building individual pieces every season, which – and then it doesn't work out because it's taking too long because then you have so many different players coming in one at a time and they're not able to mesh all, all at once. So, you know, I think it's, it just would be a dumb d- decision. And also he probably wouldn't even want to go there based on how they've been playing. I mean, I, I, I'm kind of, I'm kind of the opposite. I, I want to say that he was going to agree with me here because, like, I think, honestly, if I'm Jubilee, I kind of think Liverpool is almost the perfect place to go right now. If if they can pay for the fee, because they are they are kind of in that rebuilding process a little bit. Darwin Nunez, Cody Gakpo, the biggest shout, especially from us, we have a TikTok about it, is they need to upgrade their midfield uh, in terms of age and in terms of pedigree. And Jude Bellingham is that perfect, perfect mm-hmm. player to go mm-hmm. to slot in there. And if you're Jude Bellingham, and you know you're going to come to Liverpool at the age of 19 or 20, and they're going to build around you for the next 10 years, like, I don't know if you can pass that up. Personally, I wouldn't go to a city or a Real Madrid because that's a lot of pressure. I mean, I'm sure you can deal with it, but that's, a, that's an established squad that is at least city. Like, I don't, I don't want to say they're on the end of their reign, but they're kind of – tiptoeing towards it with their players getting older and stuff like that i think liverpool's perfect go to uh Diego, i yeah i i don't i know you said liverpool are playing poorly right now and i agree but yeah. i don't really think that tends to change players minds about current form i think that's it's one of those where if the club is big enough you know they'll ch- turn it around and if you're going to be a part of the piece that does that i feel like it's going to be like more incentive to be like, yeah, I'm gonna be one of those big pieces that they're gonna rely on. And like you said, yeah. Elijah, their midfield. I think everybody I've seen always says how Liverpool's midfield is what let them down. Um, we, I don't want to go too in depth because this isn't a whole Liverpool thing. But like when they got rid of Wijnaldum, everybody points to that being as like their first big downfall because he was like this guy that the work 
Carson Winfield, and they got rid of him and kept a solid Jordan Henderson and an aging James Milner, um, and a Fabinho who's dropped tremendously in form. Um, and so now we they need they need that that midfield again that to to really build around. And I feel like Bellingham, like you said, is just perfect. He's that guy that will do that. And he he's pretty good friends with a lot of Liverpool players. They have yeah. been working to get him there. I don't know if you, you guys have seen, but Jordan Henderson is basically just twerking for him. <laughs> you got Trent Alexander-Arnold like hitting him up every day. Like it's insane. Like the amount of amount of like attention they give him, like the it's tampering. obvious. Yeah, it's crazy. It like I, I genuinely mean that they they have been going crazy for Jude because they know that he would like to go there because of his relationship and his connections, and they know that Liverpool want him. Now, I think it's going to be more the fact that, like you said, Dortmund don't need to sell him, don't want to sell him. And he, he likes Dortmund. I, I, I haven't heard him complain about Dortmund in any way. So yeah. as of right now, I think that Dortmund are like, we're just going to chill with it. So if you want him, you know, you're going to have to wait wait until we, he's near the end of his contract. But uh, yeah, I, yeah. Think, I think Liverpool should go for him no matter what. I really do think he should be their number one target. I agree. And I, I, I don't want to take this away from Andres either because I, I do think that they could get him and others because he's not the one key piece that's going to change all the team around. They do need to upgrade other spots for sure. Of course, of course. Um, I just think they can do both. I mean, they have the money to do both. I, I just so... think that he not only is a huge signing, but that is their number one spot they should be looking for. It's like perfect, the perfect mesh, you know, mashup of a top, top player that's only has, has the world at his feet. And uh, a spot they need in their team badly, which is midfield. They badly need a midfield mm. midfielder. Like, like I'm saying, number one thing they should be looking at this summer is midfield. And the fact that Bellingham does both is just like perfect. It's it's the perfect yeah. scenario. Right. That's why I feel like he he should be number one for them. And that's why I genuinely do think, even if he costs one twenty, like Enzo Fernandez, I I would I'm going I'm saying do it 100 percent do it. You can get Jude Bellingham. You get Jude Bellingham. That's fair. I, I think he, he definitely goes for more than Enzo. Oh yeah, I mean I think he's better than Enzo, so I, I would I would say he deserves. I, I think he's better than Enzo. Yeah, I mean and he's just just younger, so yeah. this is just better investment. Yeah. Um. But yeah, okay. I like that. I like the opinions from both of you. Uh, and if if you know anyone else has any opinions, please leave them in the comments below. That's great. If you agree with Andres, go. Let us know if you agree with Diego and I. Let us know. Um. I'm kind of interested in Andres. When you play career mode, yep. do you ever buy like the young, expensive players, or are you more of a? I go buy a bunch I, of other. Uh, I'm a free agent person, so I buy a bunch of all. I buy all the free agents, <laughs> and then I sell them for like hundreds of millions of pounds. Right now, I have restarted my Wrexham thing, so I'm back in it. I'm like I have 400 million, right now in the bank, and I've spent like 200 so far. But like I don't need it. I don't need to spend any. But yeah, when I play career mode, I usually buy a bunch of young players or like buy a bunch of players. Yeah. Like if I have like a 30 million pound budget, then I'll buy like six players. Like so six, like 70 rated players that I develop over time. Cause I, cause I play the games because I don't know. I just like playing the games. Right. Right. So like they get like, they, you know, their overall increases because time. of the form. Cause I'm playing as them instead of the computer. So, you know, they, they increase better too, but yeah, usually I buy like, in loads instead of just one big player only like in the first season like if i'm like in the prem like first season then i'll buy that one big player but it's usually in defense wise because jude billingham is like is, jude billingham is that one career mode regen who just comes out of nowhere at like a 91 rating yeah and <laughs> and he's like killing the game the benzema regens Ugh. anyways all right well, we can just call it there. We're at a good 45, 45 minutes. Digger, we're leaving or be anything in the beginning. No, no, yep. no, no. It was or it's going on TikTok. You pick, you pick which one you want it to go on. Which one? <laughs> you, want, you want it on TikTok or you want it on, uh, or you just want it in the main video? Digger's leaving the podcast. Well, see. Digger's leaving the podcast. <laughs> yeah, he's going to write a letter of resignation. Reg res well, I can't say How do you say wow. it? <laughs> res resignation. There we go. Wow. He's well, going to write well, one and well, then post it. <laughs>
I'm trying to put that one out there. <laughs> I'm going to graduate soon, too. That's so embarrassing. I'm going to graduate uh, in a year, and I can't say resignation. That's embarrassing. Uh, what was the... Dago had Dago's had his his mishaps with with grammar. I I can oh, bring it up again, Dago. Or, uh, or yeah, yeah, yeah. Epitome. Epit. No. Yeah, it was that. It was epitome. Oh, yeah. You said epitome. That's right. Hey, you know yeah. what? At least I won't forget now. I know it's a bit me. There we go. Huh? There we go. I mean, All if right. you guys could only see Elijah's outtakes that he did when he filmed the TikToks oh, for the recaps. <laughs> You would be like, you'd be questioning him too, but you know, those are probably long <laughs> gone because he deleted them. <laughs> speaking of, no, nah, I still have them, but <laughs> speaking of, good segue, Andres, I'm going to turn this attention away from me now. Speaking, <laughs> speaking of, uh, we have been posting recaps for, for like the games that go under the weekend throughout the week, Premier League, MLS, FA Cup, blah, blah, blah. We'll expand as more games happen, but if you want to see those, either watch them on our YouTube, on our shorts, or follow our TikTok at for the badge podcast, I believe. I was gonna call it there. What is caught there? Diego, give me an outro. Oh, um, yeah. Thank you guys for watching. What, what episode is this? How many? How many? Twenty-four. Twenty-four. Ooh, that's a Blacking. good number. We're okay, you know, we missed, <laughs> did we miss last week? I think I might have missed last week, but um, you missed last week. No, Andres, no. <laughs> no I missed, missed last, last week. week. That's right. <laughs> I, I apologize for that. This one. All right. guy. This guy. Just busy, do the outro. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. Uh, yeah, thank, thank, thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed. You know, please, please interact with us. Comments. You know, we we, we enjoy all of them. We read. We we genuinely read all of them. So, you know, just hit us with any any th- any thoughts, any all ideas. Unfortunately, <laughs> <laughs> okay. that that was yeah. Uh, all right, thank you guys for watching. We'll see you next week. Peace. Peace. <laughs> Sorry, I had to put that one in there.